Bill Messenger is our next presenter, and he has been a staff attorney at the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation since 2001 and is its current legal director. As a staff attorney, Bill focused on First Amendment issues, arguing multiple cases before the United States Supreme Court, including successfully arguing the landmark Harris and Janus cases. Bill will now be sharing with us the continued impact of that 2018 Janus decision, one specific issue being what's called escape periods that unions use to force teachers to continue to pay union dues even after they have resigned. Since recording his presentation, the United States Supreme Court denied cert in the Savas case that he discusses with you, and he has included this potential outcome in his discussion for you to hear. Thank you for the introduction, Amanda. I'm glad to be here today to discuss uh, litigation in the wake of the Supreme Court's seminal decision in Janus versus AFSCME Council 31. As most of you watching already know, in June of 2018, the United States Supreme Court held in Janus that all public employees have a First Amendment right not to be a member of a union and not to pay any dues or fees to a union against their will. Janus was a sea change in the, the labor law in this country because prior to Janus, it was constitutional or considered constitutional for states and localities to force public teachers and other employees to pay you dues to unions against their will. But as a result of Janus, every teacher and other public employee in this nation now has a right to choose whether or not to pay dues or fees to a union. And as a result of Janus, over five million public employees have now gained that constitutional right and that important freedom of choice. However, the Supreme Court's decision in Janus in June of 2018 wasn't the end of the story. There's been a great deal of litigation in the wake of Janus. In fact, the foundation has tracked to date 189 cases uh, that have concerned uh, issues that were arising in Janus. And perhaps the most important one, the one I want to talk to you about today, is so-called escape periods. The greatest way that unions and their political allies have been resisting the Supreme Courts in Janus is by severely restricting when employees can exercise their First Amendment right under Janus to get out of the union and to stop supporting the union and its speech. So for example, a typical example of an escape period would be an individual who authorized government dues deductions in the past is prohibited from stopping those deductions except for during one 10-day escape period every year. And of course, the result of that means the individual is prohibited from exercising their First Amendment right under Janus for 355 days of the year. And most unions and many states have adopted as a primary tactic to resist Janus. In fact, in the wake of the Supreme Court's decision, a dozen states specifically amended their labor laws to allow unions and government employers to enforce those escape periods. As you can imagine, there's been a lot of litigation challenging these restrictions. We believe these restrictions are unconstitutional under Janus, that employees should have the right to exercise and get out of a union and stop paying union dues at a time of their choosing, unless they earlier and knowingly waived their right under uh, the Supreme Court's decision which so far we haven't seen any examples of employees doing. Now, while there has been some success in litigation challenging escape periods, especially in Ohio and Pennsylvania, unfortunately, many of the cases have not gone well so far and have resulted in unfavorable decisions. And most importantly, that can, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which covers California, Washington, and Oregon, and the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which covers Illinois, have held that escape periods are basically constitutional, that they can be enforced against employees, uh, and their rights can be restricted. And what that means is that even if litigation is successful in other jurisdictions, striking down escape periods or limiting their scope, eventually it's important that the Supreme Court take this issue and clarify whether escape periods are constitutional and hopefully hold that they are not. And the lead case to watch right now on that is the Foundation's case in Savas versus CSLEA. Savas concerns a particularly egregious escape period. The state of California and a union entered into an agreement whereby any employee who was a union member at the beginning of their collective bar agreement is prohibited from resigning from the union or from stopping paying union dues for the four-year duration of the collective bar agreement. It can only get out during one 30-day escape period at the end, and then they can be subject to another four-year maintenance and membership requirement. In short, the state of California is prohibiting employees from exercising their First Amendment rights except for during one 30-day period every four years. Uh, shockingly, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals actually held this was constitutional under Janus, and we've currently petitioned the United States Supreme Court 
to take the case. Uh, as of now, when I'm recording this, the Supreme Court is supposed to make a decision or conference the case on April 21st, which means on or around April 21st, we will likely have a decision on whether the Supreme Court takes of us. Uh, while I'm recording this, I don't know the results. When you're watching this, you will know whether or not the court has taken Savas. If the court takes Savas, it means that we should have a definitive decision on the constitutionality of escape periods sometime in the second half of 2024. But if the Supreme Court doesn't take Savas, it just means the Foundation's litigation program will continue like it already has, or always has, and that will continue to challenge these type of escape periods and other forums in the hope that eventually the Supreme Court will take this issue and definitively resolve it. And this is not an unusual or really unexpected development. Often when the Supreme Court issues an important decision on a matter, there's resistance to that decision by people who disagree with it or by states or localities that disagree with it. And there's different lower court opinions on how to construe that decision. And usually it takes the Supreme Court a few years until it comes back to the issue and ultimately clarifies or decides the remaining issue. You can see this in multiple areas, uh, but you can most importantly here see it in the foundation's litigation program, as it's been challenging compulsory unionism now for over 40 years, slowly chipping away, and the Supreme Court's taken cases at certain intervals to eventually strike it down. Eventually, sort of going through public sector litigation, it was in 1977 that the uh, National Right to Work Foundation won its first Supreme Court victory against compulsory unionism in Abood where the Supreme Court held it was unconstitutional to force public employees to pay for political and ideological expenses, though the court allowed compulsory unionism with respect to other fees. It was then about 15 more years, I'm sorry, 10 more years, before the Supreme Court came back to the issue in Hudson in 1986, where it clarified certain procedures um, of when employees could be forced to pay certain fees and then when they couldn't. It was then five more years before the Supreme Court again came back to the issue in the Foundation's Leonard case, where the Supreme Court clarified whether certain types of union fees were political and non-chargeable or non-political and chargeable. Then you went 19 years before the Supreme Court came back to the issue, again in Locke versus Crass, the Foundation's case there. Now after that, luckily, the pace of Foundation victories sort of started to pick up. In 2012, the Supreme Court in Knox referred to Abood as an anomaly and suggested the court might be willing to revisit the issue. Two years later, in the, Supreme, in the Foundation's Harris case, the Supreme Court basically said Abood should be overruled, but decided not to do it in that case, and only held that people who weren't public employees uh, couldn't be forced to pay compulsory union fees. And then, of course, it was four years later in the Foundation's Janus case, where the Supreme Court finally decided the issue and said, yes, there is a First Amendment right not to be forced to pay union dues against an individual's will, and that it was unconstitutional to require employees to do it. And now, of course, in the wake of Janus, we're waiting for the Supreme Court to take the next case, which most likely will be on this escape period issue. When can states and unions restrict employees' First Amendment right under Janus to drop their union membership and to stop paying union dues? Now, I'm hopeful the Supreme Court will take the case soon, uh, but if it doesn't uh, take Savas, uh, this National Right to Work Foundation will continue doing what it's always doing, pursuing litigation to expand employee freedom and employees' right to choose whether or not to join or support a union. Thank you.